Hello my friends, my name is Dr. Sayed Kazmi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, stakeholder analysis in public policy making. Those of you who have uh, watched my first two videos on the topic of public policy making, uh, they would have uh, understood by now that how our policies define and how uh, the power dynamics they are used in the context of policy making. In my second lecture, I had discussed in detail what were the models of policy making. Now, this is going to be my third video on this uh, subject of public policy making. And in today's video, as I told you earlier, I'm going to focus on stakeholder analysis. And I will tell you what is actually a stakeholder in a public policy and how do we do a stakeholder analysis uh, in order to see what would be the modus operandi for different strategies in public policy making. So let's start with the definition. Who is a stakeholder? A stakeholder can be any individual, it can be any group, or it could be any community whose interests are affected by your proposed policy. So in other words, it could be the government itself, it could be a group of politicians, it could be a religious group, it could be small communities, it could be small or large businesses, it could be a single individual as well. So any person, any group, any community whose interests are affected by the proposed policy is a stakeholder. And their interest can be affected in either a positive way or in a negative way. In other words, their interest would either be safeguarded or their interest might be threatened. In both cases, the interests are being influenced. The interests are going to be influenced in a positive or a negative way. So that person, that group would be a stakeholder. And when we talk about public policy making, usually there are many stakeholders. And there are broad group of stakeholders whose interests can be either positively or negatively affected by the policy. Now, how do we do a stakeholder analysis? Once we know that who is a stakeholder, then we make a matrix in which we identify whether that stakeholder has got how much influence or power he has got to affect that policy and number two whether he would be a supporter or an opponent of that policy so keep it in mind that there are two attributes here that you have to define once you have identified that this person or this group is going to be a stakeholder then the next two things are number one how much power do they yield and i told you the definition of power in my lecture number two on this uh, subject of public policy making so if they have got a high influence or a high power then they are in a better position to influence that policy either in support of it or either in opposition of it and number two is again whether their interest would be positively affected or negatively affected. So if their po uh, interest would be positively affected, we call them the supporters. If their interests are negatively affected, we call them the opponents. And again, it can be the, the degree can vary to which their interest would either be positively affected or negatively affected. Like for example, uh, we will take the example of uh, healthcare services. Here in UK, there has always been a policy debate about the NHS that, given the way that NHS is a public funded program, should it be privatized? So part of or should part of it should be privatized and be managed by the uh, private sector? So there has always been a policy debate, fierce policy debate. There have been proponents of uh, privatization of uh, this particular service and there have been uh, opponents as well. So. Again, it's always been a very hot debate. Now, if we take this hypothetical model of, uh, let's say, privatization of the National Health Services here in the UK, the question is, who are the stakeholders? Now, here, the stakeholders are many. The government itself is a stakeholder. 
the larger political parties are stakeholders uh, the public is a stakeholder uh, the minorities uh, can be a stakeholder the insurance companies are a stakeholder the big pharmaceutical joints are a stakeholder so you see that there are various stakeholders in this particular situation now let's say if you try to analyze them now these groups whether they are the politicians whether they are the opposition whether they are the religious group whether they are the minorities whether they are the uh, pharmaceutical joints whether they are the insurance companies you can group them you can group them number one according to the influence that they can have on the policy or the amount of power that they can yield directly or indirectly on the policy making and number two whether they would be the opponents or the proponents of this particular thing which is the privatization so we put them in a matrix and a matrix is a sort of a two by two table in which you put each of these groups either as a opponent or a proponent of the policy and number two whether they are weak proponents weak opponents or strong proponents or strong opponents of the policy so you can have like four groups again depending on the power and influence that they have directly or indirectly over the policy making process and number two again whether their interest would be positively affected or whether their interest would be negatively affected by the public policy so once you you know identify whether they are the strong proponents or strong opponents weak uh, opponents strong opponents so proponents and opponents keep in mind those who are actually in the favor of that thing they would be proponents those who are opposing it would be opponents so you classify them and once you classify them remember when you have to make policy uh, you need most of the people on your side so in other words if you make this matrix and if you put them in this uh, for uh, this two by two uh, table you need most of the people to be your strong proponents so those who are actually on your side to help you in the policy making if you have got very strong opponents then you might not be in a position to make that policy or you cannot make that policy public because there will be a lot of opposition to it you might not be able to pass the bills you might not be able to pass the laws or even if you try to do that you might come up with a very strong uh, public opposition or very strong political opposition so that's why in this uh, game of public policy making the focus is always to have strong proponents or strong supporters and maximum number of groups of people should fall in this domain so you try to increase uh, the number of strong supporters or proponents and you try to decrease the number of strong opponents only then the policy can be made and can be made successfully so this is very important so once you have put it down into these two by two tables identifying whether they are strong supporters or proponents weak supporters or weak proponents uh, weak opponents or strong opponents then what you do is you have to manage them accordingly now the most important thing is that again you are mostly worried about your strong opponents so how to influence your opponents so that you try to bring them into the box of being strong supporters or even if it's not strong supporter at least weak supporters and we use different policy tools for that and the policy tools that are commonly used are two here which you need to understand number one is what we call as an IEC information education and communication many times the strong opponents uh, they might not understand the implications of the policy they feel threatened that if you do something that's going to hurt their interests that could be their financial interest that could be their political interest whatever so those interests could be hurt so you need to tell them that well if their fears are that their interests would be hurt you need to clarify them that's not going to be the case so how you do that you do that through information education and communication so you inform them you engage them engagement here is the key word 
you need to engage them so you need to have consultative processes so you sit down on a table you discuss the nitty gritties you listen to their fears you try to address their fears you try to come across how those fears could be minimized so information education some of the people they simply because they've got lack of knowledge they think that a policy is going to be against them like in case of privatization some people might think that the government is taking away free services from them they might not think that you know when you privatize the services it brings about efficiency so the longer wait times could be reduced people who have been waiting on the list for months and years that can come down to a matter of weeks even days so efficiency but you know an ordinary person cannot understand that so again how would you make them understand it's by educating them because the background knowledge is not there you need to educate them like how these things can work in their favor so you have to alleviate their fears so information education and communication some people simply resist the things because there's not enough communication with them because people are lying in their isolated silos and not communicating much so you need to communicate you need to have frequent communications again the best uh, method for that is a consultative process series of consultative processes like so people when they sit together when they listen to one another they find common grounds and those common grounds you can bring those strong opponents either to being weak supporters or strong supporters as well depending on how good you are in your consultative process and number two is advocacy now advocacy is also a very fine tool so advocacy is like uh, bringing those people on your side who are not directly related related with that particular policy process or who are not directly affected by that so in certain matters where those people like uh, you can take I, I cannot give you an example in the healthcare policy because health is a very broad subject and it's almost everybody is affected by that but then if you go to certain other sectors like the energy sector like the uh, financial sector then you can come across uh, various tools where there are certain people whose interests might not be affected so if you try to bring that support behind you those people who would be either neutral and would not be bothered about that policy in either way because they have nothing to do with that even like foreign policy so those people how you can bring it behind you how you can bring them behind you the process for that is advocacy so advocacy is a process by which you can bring those people who do not have direct interests you know embedded in a policy you can bring them on your side so again advocacy there are different ways of doing advocacy you can do it through uh, communication you can do it through media you can do it through consultative processes um, so on and so forth so to summarize all this a stakeholder is a person whose interests are either positively or negatively affected by a public policy and there could be many stakeholders remember when the we are doing a stakeholder analysis first of all we have to identify that person or that group whose interest can be either positively affected or negatively affected and number two we see how much influence they have got on the public policy process so if they've got a strong influence like the politicians the government the armed forces we call them those groups who have got strong uh, influence on the public policy and those people uh, who do not have uh, much influence on this whole process like the general public then we call them the uh, those group that have got weak influence so once we have identified whether they are opponents or proponents and whether they've got the low influence or high influence what we do is we put them in a two by two matrix to see whether they are strong supporters or weak supporters or strong opponents and weak opponents and again we have to do advocacy we have to do IEC to, and the key here is that you have to bring most of the groups and peoples in either the strong supporter group or the weak supporter group and only that once you have got maximum people moving into these two groups only then your policy can be accepted publicly and can be effective if you are not doing that and you come up with a policy you probably uh, that's going to be a policy failure that probably might not be implemented the way you uh, think that it should be implemented and there will be a lot of public and uh, even political opposition to that so i hope you have understood uh, in this short video 
what is a stakeholder in public policy making and how we do the stakeholder analysis. If you have liked this video, please uh, press the like button, share it with your friends. And if you are uh, watching my channel for the first time, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you have got any questions or uh, comments, you can put your questions and comments down in the uh, comment section below. And I will get back to you to answer your queries or questions. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.